Hi guys, welcome back to Bok Bok Bouquet. If you're new here, we're an all poultry educational, family friendly channel. So if you're into that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if not, no hard feelings. If you're like, come on ladies, just show me how to hatch these call ducks, we'll get right into it. I wanna put a quick disclaimer here in the beginning. Most chicks and ducks, I'd never assist or help them out. They have no problems hatching on their own. These call ducks are the exception. They're bred to have such short necks and beaks that they usually cannot pip and break out of the eggshells on their own. And in my experience, if you don't assist them out, they can suffocate and die in the egg. So these are the exception to the rule. Ducks, keep this in mind, hatch much slower than chicks. Chicks usually from pip to hatch can take anywhere from 24 to 36 hours, whereas ducks, in my experience, from internal pip to hatch, usually take 48 to 72 hours. So you need to have patience and take time with them. They take much longer to absorb the yolk sac than the chicks do. So have patience. I put my call duck eggs into lockdown on about day 23 to 24. I notice they usually internally pip on day 24 or 25 and they usually are ready to fully hatch on anywhere from day 26 to day 28. So I will be checking for that internal pip. Here's what the egg looks like with no internal pip and here's what the egg looks like once they have internally pipped. I shine my candler through there and then you can see that their head has broken through to the air cell part of the egg and you can see their little duck bill flapping in it. Once they have broken through the membrane to that air cell part of the egg, they have started breathing air on their own and if they do not internally pip, within about 24 hours they could suffocate and die in the egg. So as a fail safe, I use my long needle nose tweezers and I poke like a pinpoint size hole in the egg so that they can breathe air and I do not have to worry about that. Once I have poked my safety hole in the egg, I put the egg back in the incubator for a full 24 hours. I proceed no further. I just let the egg sit for 24 hours. At this point, I'll wait and see if they pip on their own. <laughs> in my experience, in most cases, they don't. So after the 24 hours has passed since the safety hole, this is when when I proceed further. I use my same little needle nose tweezers and I start chipping away little part of the egg. I go to about a dime sized hole. If I see any sort of like membrane, I'm going to use um, a Q-tip and I'll wet it with some warm water and some Vaseline. Make sure that you do not get any Vaseline in their nostrils or anything. You do not want to clog that. They need to breathe. And I also make sure that the membrane uh, isn't covering any of their nostrils so none of it gets covered so they can still breathe. And then I put the egg back and I proceed no further again and I wait four hours. Every four hours I just do little chippings away Again, the ducks hatch very slow. They take a while to absorb that yolk sac. You'll be seeing that chewing motion. They're absorbing it. And when you are chipping away little pieces of the eggshell, keep looking at those veins. Make sure when you are chipping away pieces of the eggshell that you do not um, break the membrane or hit a vein. If you do, they will start to bleed. And if it's bad, it, it, it could be fatal. So if you do see any blood, just pat with a dry paper towel or dry q-tip and hold very very light pressure there till the bleeding stops it, it's usually not a big deal don't freak out if this happens like just proceed no further and make sure that you keep the membrane moist with the vaseline and i have used coconut oil in the past but i prefer the vaseline i've noticed this works so much better for me the coconut oil would really dry out and make the membrane crispy and the vaseline really keeps it moist and nice so i'll wet it with water put on the Vaseline, and at this point you can see how far the call duck has progressed. So when I do see um, a far progression, when I'm chipping away pieces of the eggshell, if they are progressed, you'll see the veins receding and starting to disappear, and you can start moving back part of that membrane that the veins are gone. But if you see healthy veins, don't touch them. Just make sure you keep that membrane moist with the Vaseline and put back in the incubator. So again, I am doing First a dime size hole, and then I will chip away little parts every four hours. Just make the hole gradually a little and a little bigger, and then uh, you'll notice that your duckling will start to get more and more comfortable. So 
once I get a pretty big size hole, usually by the next day, like a whole another 24 hours, I, I don't I don't mess with the ducklings when I sleep overnight. I just usually make sure the membrane is really like moist with the Vaseline and I just go to sleep and at first thing in the morning I wake up and I tend to them again, check on them. And I want to point out that when you are chipping away pieces of that eggshell, make sure that when you're looking in there that there is an air pocket between the membrane and the and the eggshell that you're chipping away do not chip away eggshell that is connected to the membrane or else you will break a vessel and get bleeding only chip away parts of the eggshell that are in the air cell half of the egg so pretty much you are going to be chipping away half of the egg just the air cell part of the egg and i do not help the duckling out of the egg once i have chipped off half the air cell part of the egg I just put the egg back in there and usually when the duckling is ready they will kick out and push out when they are ready the duckling needs to absorb that yolk sac before it comes out if they do come out without absorbing that yolk sac and without the veins receding it's almost always fatal they need to absorb it so when you shine the flashlight in there you can usually see how far they progressed along by the time they're almost ready when you can see in there and they're starting to get more comfortable and slowly let part of their body out you can see it's almost receded completely flat into them like their belly button if they do kick out slightly early and I notice it just looks like a little a little bit more um, obvious than completely gone swollen into them I will wet with some veterocin um, antimicrobial spray to like clean it off to prevent infection and then I'll put some teramycin antibiotic ointment on there and then it usually just completely just disappears and they fluff up and it's like their normal belly button but if they kick out before absorbing that yolk sac and if they still have veins in there they could bleed out that is not a good thing so never help the duckling out of the egg just remove the air cell part half of the egg and when they are ready they will kick out so every four hours you're going to be chipping away part of the eggshell making your little dime size hole bigger and bigger and then once it's half of the egg then just wait they'll kick out when they're ready and as these four hours are going by and i'm keep wetting the membrane as the little veins recede and dry out i will keep pushing the membrane out of the way and eventually when they're just all the way exposed in there you'll notice that they start to like ah like they they want to get a little more comfortable they're not as cramped in there and contorted in there and I have my humidity in my incubator, sorry if I forgot to mention this. It usually sits anywhere from 68 to 70% humidity. So along with keeping your humidity there, just make sure you keep that membrane moist so it doesn't dry out while they're in there taking their sweet time hatching because again they take forever like 72 hours to absorb that yolk sac so make sure you have your patience thanks so much for watching guys we're just going to leave them in the incubator till they fluff up and are ready to go on to their brooder next week we're going to be putting out a video all on the best way everything you need to know about brooding and raising ducks so that'll be right here once it's out for now we're going to have another good video right here you should check out don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments Comments. I reply to every comment. I make sure to answer all your questions. So if you have any, just go ahead and ask. We'll see you next time. Bye.